Right, I'm, I'm Mark Newell, I'm your host for this panel. You may have noticed I'm wearing Star Wars clothes, I'm not an expert on Wednesday. These guys are though, and you don't want to hear me talking. So I'll get it all kicked off and rolling, starting at the end, getting into a show like this. It's coming off a franchise that people know, and people are excited for. How excited were you when you found out that this was where you were going to be? As in, when when I got the role? Absolutely, or, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was it was incredible when I first got it. So I had like a series of auditions before I got it. And then my agent called, and uh, it was the second time my agent called me about a role. And uh, so I was pretty excited. First time I was like blown away when I got like a call about a role, because that was like my first ever role on like a Netflix thing. And then like the second time for Wednesday, I got a call and I was like a little bit calmer. And then they were like, oh, there's a great director attached as well, like a legendary director called Kim. I was like, Kim? Kim. I don't remember any Kim directors, so it was like going through my head. And then it was only when I looked at the email after I saw Tim, I was like, oh, it's Tim Burton. I was like, wow, that is like, that's pretty special. So um, yeah, I was pretty pretty hyped at that point. And then um, it was just an experience that kept evolving, really. I mean, we'll get into it probably with other questions, but it was the excitement grew as we were doing it, you know. It was one of those things that started off as like a small cluster thing and expanded out, and it was just this beautiful experience with, with all these guys and, and John too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> uh, no, no, no one is saying. The sound guy sabotaged you. Thank you. Um, By popular demand. I don't know how technology works. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I got. I remember I got the audition and I was reading through the email and there were a lot of code words used because you know they had to keep it kind of secret and stuff and so. I was uh, reading through the email and it was like, yeah, this girl goes to the school and then I kind of noticed it said director Tim Burton and I was kind of like, I googled things and I figured out pretty quickly that it was the Wednesday Adams thing that I had seen and I was like, oh, this is exciting. Did the tape, didn't hear anything for ages and then I was actually in the process of auditioning for something else when my agent called and said that uh, I booked it and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, like, do you have good news? And they were like, yeah, you booked Wednesday. Remember that thing you auditioned for? That's actually the Wednesday Addams show. And I was like, I actually figured that out. Um, and I was just so pumped. I did cartwheels. I was in the park that day. So I, I, I went and did some cartwheels. Uh, and then I tried to keep my cool. And was like, oh yeah, very, very exciting. Thank you. So when do I leave? Thank you. Awesome. Uh, and then, yeah, it was awesome. Oh, well, mine was um, it was a pretty crazy journey. I actually auditioned uh, for Yoko, and I thought, okay, there's no way I'm going to get this project. That's like the automatic thought. But I thought, just have fun with it, go along with it, and uh, see what happens. And then I think the next day, my agent was like, okay, they want you in for a chemistry read. And this was via Zoom at the time because of COVID, of course. And I was freaking out because it was the first time I'd ever done a chemistry read. And um, they didn't really know what they wanted from the character at first. So I was just kind of like exploring. It was totally different from the Yoko you see today. She was more like a, a girly Harajuku, like golf kind of character. And then I did my chemistry, completely botched it because I was so nervous. And I got rejected the next day. And I wasn't willing to let it go so easily, so I told my agent, listen, I need to send out another tape uh, because I totally messed it up, I was too nervous, but I want to keep, I really think I'm right for this part. And so I sent out an another tape and that gained some interest, and then four more tapes later, I got the part. So that was my journey. <laughs> That's a good tip. So coming into it, obviously you mentioned you, you know it's Tim Burton, you've realised it's Tim Burton, you're younger actors, what was your familiarity with his work? I don't know how you could go your life without seeing like the, a lot of Tim Burton movies. I, I personally loved Beetlejuice as a kid, obsessed with Beetlejuice. Uh, I mean, Corpse Bride, 
They're all so good. They're all so good. So I was very familiar with this work, probably everyone. Yes. Yeah. Same, same here. I mean, um, I think all of his um, his work just like really pulls on your heartstrings, and um, it's very much a childhood staple. Watching like a Tim Burton movie. So I was over the moon when I um, when I found out. And everyone's so weird too in his movies. Like all of his animated characters are so weird and and quirky and scary in a good in a good way and so I mean it, it literally fit perfectly with the kind and of thing. This show fits in so well with the rest of his if you want to call it canon, because he definitely has a style. And he mentioned chemistry reads. So when you come in to do a chemistry read you want to make sure everybody bounces off each other well. But individually, how much did your character adjust and change because you each bring something to that role. So did it did it alter slightly as you, you go through rehearsals and working it all out? How did that work? Yeah, I mean, it changed completely, like, uh, I think everyone sort of like knows what sort of role we have in the show or whatever, but like this stage now, but like at the beginning it was it was completely different. Uh, I don't think, uh, similar to what Naomi was saying, I don't think they sort of knew like what they wanted to do with our characters specifically, they were sort of like, alright, here's a character and like go away and figure it out. So uh, I think the thing for Jonna and I, like I came with this whole thing for Ken and then like we met each other and then you know obviously the, there was this whole thing going around on set essentially before we even got there of like, uh, Oliver Watson, uh, John Diaz Watson, uh, you slightly look the same. Uh, are you guys related? Uh, I know she's American and you're British. Uh, I saw your headshot and I was like, that guy is my brother. Yeah. Like, I feel like that guy's gotta be my brother. It was a bit like the Dev Patel movie, Lion, you know, like sort of long lost relatives, I think, in a way. But yeah, so we, we, uh, we, we pitched it to them essentially, and that's how we became twins in the show. It's like we just literally we had like the singing rehearsal for episode two. You know where we've got that small bit of like us doing the silly dance and stuff and um, yeah at that first meeting Joy was there as well and it was us too and we just looked at each other and went yeah we can we can do this we can do this and yeah we pitched it to Anna Miles the writers and then you know they say the rest is history. And that's also why my ha that's why we have our haircuts because you had longer hair at the time and I had yeah. I also had longer hair yeah and they like we did our camera tests and they were like oh they look too similar we have to cut Ollie's hair. Yeah, and that's what like, Tim said. They were saying the same to you. And I said, no, I love his hair. Cut mine. Yeah. Do yeah. mine. I mean, it's the right decision, but... Yeah. But we always end up having the same hair as Star. Yeah, we do. I mean, like, we're, it's, it's pretty similar hair. now. Yeah. You know, I'm a bit jealous of your blonde highlights, but uh, so. it's pretty... You're sun-kissed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you see these amazing sets. You see these incredible costumes. It all is made... It's intended to immerse you in the world that you're walking into. Have you ever, any of you individually, been on a set that's anything like this before? Or is this real sort of blue sky, new world things for you? I mean, not at all. For me personally, this is, Wednesday was my second acting job, so it was my second time on set ever. What, what was the first? Uh, Skylines 3. I was shooting aliens. That was a lot of fun, actually, because we had like these guys um, on stilts in like these alien suits, and um, we were like in the heat of summer. Um, so that was incredible, but Wednesday was very different um, to that experience, for sure. I have to say, uh, my first job, you know when they speak about like being like an actor early on in your career and you're like, oh, you're gonna have to get the bus to work and you know, you're gonna get like, I don't know, like treated poorly when you're at the bottom and stuff. I did not have that for my first job. I was very lucky. Look, I was a very, very small part of the project, but uh, I was on a project called The School for Good and Evil, and they like were throwing the kitchen sink at it in terms of money. Like, obviously there's big actors and stuff attached to it, but the sets that they had were like incredible. And it like, that just set a tone for everything that was on there. We had the best food, like, oh my God. Uh, we like, were looked after like ridiculously. They like overdid everything for us. And it was only like, they literally said at the end, they were like, yeah, this is not every job you're gonna get. So it's like next job, probably drive myself to work, you know, flat tire or something on the way, you know. So um, I'm very grateful that I had that at the start. And uh, you know, it's all downhill from here, as they say. <laughs> Sounds like you're a lucky charm for the project. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, we'll see, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Am I right in saying you filmed in Romania? Yeah. What was that experience like, filming in Eastern <laughs> Europe? What was that like? It was uh, honestly like amazing, very interesting. It took a lot of adjustment because none of us had been there before, I, I believe is the case. Um, I mean, I always wanted to you know, if I'm going to do film and TV, I would love to go travel and see places that I wouldn't normally see and experience them in a way that you wouldn't as a tourist, right? So it, I was excited 
Um, yeah, but we were, we, I mean, we were out there for like eight months, so it was, we lived in Bucharest that whole time, and I, my favorite parts were when we got to go, kind of go and see the nature and the castles and stuff like that. Uh, and what are the primary differences being over there? I mean, the food's different, presumably, but, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna necessarily give you the local food, so what were the real differences? The food is a huge one. I think all of us in Definitely the, the food. Definitely. Oh, Remember sure. what I said earlier about no, no, <laughs> no, no. But like, honestly, the thing about being in Romania, honestly, it was like the, you know, a, a lot of people are so courteous and they speak English. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people, you go on holiday, you know, wherever you go, and we always expect other people to speak English. It's like a very, I think it's in the rules of like Rule Britannia or whatever. It's Rule Britannia number one that we, wherever we go, we expect people to speak English, and that's like a really courteous thing. But there's only a certain amount like people are going to speak to you in English, you know. So pretty much, but it's a long way of saying like we only had each other, so we became like this real family so I'm sure you've seen like the ridiculously silly things we do on Instagram or whatever that we posted but like that stuff like that's like not fake that's we would hang out every weekend and do stuff like that because we only had each other uh, yeah, for like yeah. a long time and on set too like the Romanian crew were so nice yeah, and yeah. so accommodating and, yeah. and wonderful and like the however much Romanian you could learn they were just so excited that you would make the effort which was so nice and they were just they were great and on the food note like we are also vegetarians so that's why it was so difficult yeah, yeah. I don't think they've discovered unique. vegetarianism uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we all had all kinds of allergies so um <laughs> these honestly these guys have like shopping lists worth yeah. of allergies like yeah. but then like we'd find supermarkets like, I know John and I um, would find supermarkets um, over in Romania that like um, had all of the um, things that we we love to eat and we'd bring our own we food to that. we'd cook for yeah. each other we even did a Valentine did a Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day I wasn't together. invited I'll just say that. <laughs> it's just ours. Like put out. It's alright, it's alright. <laughs> Film and TV, it's generally hurry up and wait, isn't it? There's a lot of sitting around between setups and so on and so forth. What would you guys get up to whilst you're Mischief. Watching? I could well time. imagine. What kind of mischief? Oh, we can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my Switch to set a lot. Yeah, it's pretty mischievous, yeah. Like playing Nintendo at wall. Calm down. <laughs> well, you'd walk out of your trailer door and usually someone was there, like, you know, to offer you water or something, and sometimes if you walked out and no one was there, you'd be like, hmm, maybe I'll just go run around the we'd, we'd go to craft a lot, like get snacks from um, pet the dogs. crafties, pet, pet the dogs. There were a lot of dogs around on set, so we nap. Um, nap, yes, we'd have naps. Yeah. Naomi and would have this fantastic thing, may I just add, when she would go to the craft services, right? So all you that are like are familiar with like on sets, there's like craft services, right? It's like coffees and stuff all day, like just to keep people awake, essentially. Uh, so we would go down there like as a, as a boredom thing, and every time we would go down there, Naomi made this joke once, and I would, we laughed and stuff, but like they just would not get it. They would not get the joke. They'd go, do you want sugar with your coffee? And she'd go, I'm sweet enough. And like, it just would not land. It would never land. And it would always go, so do you want sugar then? Or like, it's not really an answer, is it? Yeah. No, they yeah. really didn't get it. And they actually thought I was being rude. Yeah. No, but I was, it was a joke because I, I always thought it was quite cute <laughs> to say that. And then they'd, they'd just be like, so do you want sugar or not? You know, they'd get really aggressive. I'd be like, no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Causing mayhem. It's the worst kind of joke you have to explain it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Your characters, how do you, f this is a question for me, how do you feel about your own characters? Do you like your own characters? You're obviously invested in them, but what, how do you feel about them? I love Ken. I love Ken. Who loves Ken? Yeah. Hey, wait, we've got something, we've got something, we'll go back. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, Ken's just a harmless guy. Like, he, okay, maybe he's like with the evil side, if you want to call him evil, like with the sirens or whatever. And okay, maybe he tries to wreck a boat race. And but you know, that's the world we live in. It's a corrupt world, you know. It's everyone for themselves. Uh, and I think Ken's just like a good guy. Like the um, the first the way into me for the character. Uh, there's a line that was deleted from the script, uh, the scene. <laughs> we, we got around to shooting the scene, but like, it was my fir our first lines, I'm pretty sure, in the show. Like, that scene got done, but it was in episode two, right? It's just before the boat race, and uh, Joy's character, Bianca, says to me, oh, I'm asking about the boat race or something, and I'm like, this is thing, you know the spring concert that happens where the big fire goes up and everything? So that's supposed to be called the spring concert. And we were supposed to go on and sing. Obviously the fire happens and stuff, whatever. But before that all happens, we're speaking about like the poke up and stuff. And Kent's reason for doing all that underwater stuff is so that he can sing and be the solo artist. So I was like, 
I, I recognize this guy. Like, I can, I, can, I can resonate with this guy. So, like, a Joy's line was something. My line was like, oh, if I do this, do I get the solo in the spring contest? And she was like, yeah, you can sing Hakuna Matata. Yeah, Hakuna Matata, and that was it. yeah. Hakuna Matata. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, this guy is like, thinks he's a rock star, but unfortunately he really isn't. Uh, he's just an idiot, but a lovable idiot. Yeah, same. I love Davina, and I love that um, we found the siblinghood in each other, and we always had each other to play off of, and I love that. And um, I think it's cool to be in the sirens because we get to wear the contacts and look really creepy. So I like that, and we had to put scales on. So I love, I love all that stuff about her. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see, like, you know, maybe what else the school has, like what else we, we all have to offer. Because I think we, we all have such big ideas about our characters too, and they were really receptive to listening to all of those ideas, so yeah. I do love that. I love my relationship with you and um, Bianca too. I, I mean, like the mean girl sidekick is how I describe my character, and um, I, I've always loved those characters when you like are watching a show and the trio comes up, and I'm like, yeah, I'm part of the trio, so I loved it, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. I, I think I love how um, mysterious Yoko is, and she just, she's just a cool girl. She's like the type of girl I wanted to be in high school, because I was not a cool girl um, back in the day. And so it was nice kind of being able to live with her as well, is that she's unapologetically herself, and uh, she just doesn't care about what anybody else thinks. She just kind of does her own thing. And uh, I just love her outfit as well. I wanted to keep her boots. I think that was the one thing that was like, okay, I want to keep those boots. They didn't let us keep anything. Yeah, Someone asked me this anything. earlier. They did not let us keep anything. Yeah, it's awful. awful. That was going to be a question later on, but I'm asking now because you brought it up. You say they didn't let you keep anything. Did you get anything? So there's these pair of boots, right, in episode four. I don't know if you've seen them. They've got like a oh, pair of boots are wore, like white boots. Obviously, like we're all wearing white, you know, for the effect of the blood. So oh, it looks more bloody or whatever. Um, so I, I had the boots on and they had like these, they were just like the most offensive boots. Like if you wore them, you would genuinely have to do a double take of us and you go, I don't think you can come into this room wearing those boots, you know. That's the level that we were at with these, with these footwear. Uh, and I thought they were amazing. And I was like, I want to keep these. And uh, anyway, they have blood all over them because of like the obviously what happened and stuff. And they still wouldn't let me keep them. I'm like, no one is gonna buy them. Just let me have them. Like, nah, nah, nah. You can't have them. So you know, tragedy. I did steal a teddy bear from yeah from the Harvest Festival in episode one when there's like the Ferris wheel and all the fair games. Listen, I I did ask, and I they said. Yeah, sure. Nothing's been shot yet. It's not going to ruin any continuity because it hasn't been. It was like we just got to set. It was our first night shoot. I was feeling bold. So I was like, um, no one's going to notice if I just take that, right? And he was like, and I was like, all right. So I took it. I do have a little blue teddy bear. It's about this big. It's super tiny. Um, but it's hanging in my bedroom. Thank you. Constant reminder you're a thief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I accidentally. <laughs> I accidentally went home with um, a purple hair strip in my hair at the end of a long day, and I never accidentally. I, I, accidentally, and I and I never brought it back because I just forgot about it. They did <laughs> let me the keep, last day. They let me keep my ponytail from the Raven yeah. when I have the long hair. And they let me keep that. I wore that to oh, the Lady Gaga concert. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I mean it matches my hair perfectly. I'm like, what? No one's gonna wear yeah, this. Yeah, nobody's hair gonna again. wear that. Yeah, and my purple hair strips, like I can take that home. Yeah, I can accidentally go home with them. What about your fangs? Did they let you keep your fangs? No, they didn't let me. So I lost. I actually lost one of my fangs oh. on the last day, and I don't know if you can see this in the scene, but like, like whilst we were doing the scene, when I put it back in the case, one tooth was missing. So I only have one fang in that scene, and um, I had to go. <laughs> I had to cover it up, so like I had to make sure that when I was saying my line, that no one could see that I had one tooth missing. <laughs> I've just remembered I am a thief. I am a thief. I'll admit it. Uh, your your prosthetic thing reminded me. I stole the contact lenses. I didn't steal. I, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. I didn't steal them, right? I had a great relationship with the optician lady who would always put our eye, because you know, they're coming over and they're putting something in your eye and like early days, like, I don't know how Jonna did it, Jonna's like, 
they were just completely zoned out. But I don't know if you guys ever had someone come in with like a finger in your eye. It's like, it's really not the most pleasant thing in the world. And like, it was an adjustment period for me in the beginning. But, um, but yeah, I had had a really good relationship with her. Like we'd, we'd laugh and stuff. It was all throughout, you know, we'd have to get the lenses in every day. So on the last day, she uh, came up to me and quietly said, don't tell anyone gave it to me and that was it so I've got those at home so you know I can just you know walk upstairs with some uh, siren contact lenses on yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Nightshade Society has got quite a history your version is a slightly more passive version of that do you think your characters are aiming at some point to get back towards that older version of the Nightshade or do you think they're quite happy doing what they're doing at the moment I, I hope Davina's out for blood because I would love that I think just like there's so, I mean, there's so much, it's, it's like a secret society in a magical school. I don't know how you don't have this, not like evil, but you know, if, if there are some baddies around, I want to fight them, you know? I mean, we could literally rule the underwater, nobody knows. So no, I, would not. there's a lot to do there. Um, I think, I don't know, I think there's a lot more significance there. Also, they're all Edgar Allan Poe themed, and he's not a uh, chill guy. <laughs> From what I understand. And your fellow cast members, uh, of course, Jen is one of the most well-known people in the world at the moment. Professionally, working with these folks, what, how good of a time do you have with Gwendolyn and all the other actors? It's and you're all everyone's learning as they move through their careers. What have you taken away from this so far? I mean, um, being on set uh, with them was absolutely incredible. I mean, I learned so much just by watching them because I was. I think it was a learning experience for me because it was my second time on set ever and I um, I just loved how warm they were and, and how professional and I they were really people I looked up to whilst we were filming out there. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just surprised with the level of talent on a set, you know, like people so young, so talented, you know. Um, just people who've been doing it for years, like Percy, Jenna, uh, Georgie's even been doing it a long time, Emma, like, I started film acting quite late, I did like quite a lot of theatre when I was younger and that was my sort of foray, but like these kids, I say kids, because they've been doing it since they were kids, but like, I think Percy said something like, he's not had a birthday at home since he was like 12 years old, you know, like, the thing of that, because he's always been working, like, the whole idea of like being homeschooled and everything, it's like, they're real actors, you know, like, and we're obviously actors as well, but I mean, like, they've been doing it for so, such a long time, so I have a massive respect for them. Of course, there's the adults as well, you know, Gwendolyn's fantastic, and like, so gracious on set, and Jamie, who plays the sheriff, is like, a fantastic sort of father figure for all of us while we were there, but, um, um, yeah, I, I really would not underplay like the uh, the talent as well. I mean, Jenna's evident, but like Emma and and and, and Percy especially, honestly, really good actors. And they were all like fun as well. You know, like when you're when you're going to set and you're like, oh, I'm doing a scene with Gwendolyn Christie or Catherine Zeta Jones or Louise Guzman. Like, it's it can be intimidating, but they're so nice and and fun and professional, and you can learn a lot from watching them. But at the same time, you just kind of want to chat to them and get their stories and. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. I loved that. that was, uh, the cast is the best part, I think. Yeah. Are you guys cool taking a couple of questions from the audience? We'd love to. Yeah, Who's got questions away. ready? Okay, if anyone's got any questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, steering clear, obviously, from season two. So, no talk on season two. <laughs> if, if any of you were a different creature, what would you be? So, werewolf, vampire, siren? Ooh. I'd want to be a werewolf. Yeah. I feel like that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. For what reason? Um, well, I, do, I don't know why, but when I'm watching um, Emma turn into like wolf out, I just heard nails just kind of like, it's you know? It's to do with the nails. I just I love it. I love the nails. It's just like, maybe that's just the worst reason, but I, mean, I, I just think that, that looks so cool. Yeah, and also, um, the, the fight scene just looked so epic. And it, it would just be cool to just shape shift into a wolf and just fight, you know? Yeah. I think it, like me as Jana would want to be a siren, but if I didn't get to pick siren, I would say a vampire, just because they're so cool. And like, I want to wear sunglasses indoors all the time and like around, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. 
I don't know. I'm pretty happy as a siren. Like, it's a great question, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Maybe a hide. Maybe I'll throw a wild card in there and become a hide instead. Because, yeah, I think, like, having snakes in your head all day would get pretty itchy and, I don't know, taste for blood. What's that like, Naomi? <laughs> I mean, you know, dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And then werewolf, I mean, having the having the rainbow nails is pretty cool. So, yeah, maybe like a tier list, high she, werewolf. She paints them rainbow? She does. Yeah. Yeah, but like, if you can have like natural, you know, rainbow ones. But I don't think they're not, I think she paints them. You sure? I thought she went method. No, I think... <laughs> 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 I resign my question. We have another question over here. Perfect. Who's your favourite character and it can't be your own character? Oh, you stole my answer. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I always said Hunter, Tyler. I think Tyler is my favourite character. I just think, um, yeah, I love, uh, I love a secret. I love a, a, a two, side, two sides to the person and there's something hiding underneath and play on words. Um, and yeah, I also just love the way Hunter played him. I thought it was really interesting. So probably Tyler. I love Principal Weems. I think she's so, I just love how mysterious she is. Also, she's just so um, stoic and very cool, calm and collected. And when she's angry, you're just like, oh my God, I'm getting in trouble. Um, but she, I, I just I just love her character as well. I think there's um, a, a lot of secrecy and, um, and she can shape shift. How cool is that? I'm convinced that the show is secretly not about Wednesday Adams. It's actually about Eugene Ottinger, uh, played by Musa. By the way, like, whilst we're on the subject of young people and talent, like Musa, Musa was like 13 or 14 when we were doing the show. Obviously, like, we're all, all a little bit older than him, but like, he's an incredible actor, you know, <laughs> for like his age. He's fantastic. Like, he did a project before, and like, he was leading. He was like cast number one if you want to get to that which is like the first person on the call sheet like education wise uh so he's the that he was like the busiest on that that job he came to us and like it was a great role on the page like as we were reading it like uh, i would we all had like dialect coaches or the english people had dialect coaches just to show up the accent and the dialect coach would always say like how much he loved working with musa because he was just like this bright ball of energy um but yeah i think eugene ottinger has got to be the best character on the show non-biased Excellent. Any more questions? Yes, right, just at the back. Hi. Um. Yes, he's on. Hi. Um, so, you mentioned about being on set and, you know, the memories you made, but what's your favourite memory that you've had on set with each other? That we're allowed to say. <laughs> What's yeah, on set, on set. Oh, on set. Yeah, 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 on not set. behind the scenes. Oh, okay, yeah. on set. Ooh. <laughs> behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. <laughs> I, see. I see what you're talking about. Cool. Yeah, I was like, which one? Um, ooh. It's like, I'm not thinking of which one. I, like, I'm not thinking of one. I'm trying to pick through the so many that I yeah, have. Yeah, so, we've had so many fun and just like kooky, incredible moments that it's hard to pick just one isolated, you know. Yeah, I would say I think I think you know what I'm gonna say in the library. Yeah, okay. Library. In episode in episode eight with the you, me, Joy, uh, Emma, and Georgie. Um, <laughs> so we had the scene where it was the three sirens, and it was um, Emma who plays Enid and Georgie who plays Ajax, and they are coming into the library. And they've called us there because they have to tell us that Wednesday is captured, and we have to like go save her. And um, we had. Right before the scene started, um, we had these like lockets, right, that are supposed to kind of suppress our siren powers. And um, right before the scene started, I was reading through it, and it says like they take off their lockets. And I was like, huh. And I went to the costume department. And I was like, hey, uh, we're supposed to take these off, like within like the span of a couple of seconds, but they're like clasped at the back. So they were like, oh no, okay, we'll just we'll just use this like sticky stuff, and we just stuck it to the back of our necks um, with like this sticky stuff. But at the start of the scene, we're at the top of the staircase and we're running down. And so every time, like, it took ages to film this scene because every time we came down the stairs, one of our lockets would fall off. And it got to the point, like, at first it was kind of like, oh, shoot, sorry. Oh, just let, let me put it back on. And then sometimes we'd be mid-filming and I would just see Joy's drop and I'd be like... And then Joy would kind of be like... And then we, like, we... Anyway, we ended up just descending into, like... 
giggles and laughter. Emma and Georgie couldn't keep themselves together either. It was Georgie's fault. It was just like, yeah, it was Georgie's fault. It's like Georgie messed up his line, right? He was like, Principal, the Principal, what do you call him? Reams? Principal Reams, right? He couldn't get his W's, right? He'd go, Principal Reams, Principal Reams. And every time we would say it, we would go, uh, I think you might want a line check there, Georgie. And he'd just get the giggles. And so, like. And then it would go silent, and you'd yeah. just hear. And it was a locket hidden yeah, yeah, yeah. around. <laughs> and that would set it off. And like Joy was like, the, the, the Georgie and Joy were like face to face as you see in the scene. And like he would set horror first, and then like uh, Emma would start laughing. And to be fair, you and I like kept no, like, a pretty kept straight face, almost to the point where you go like, these guys, we were we were concerned because like if there's a bloopers reel and like those guys are laughing and, and we're like you were like sh completely straight faced and stuff, we we're like, God, people are gonna think we're so dull or like so. But we bored. both got told off that day, so we yeah. were we were. <laughs> yeah, we both got absolutely here. dug out at one point. <laughs> one of the best bits about that scene as well, like completely selfishly here, but like in a really funny a testament to Emma. So there was like when when we're running down the stairs, like obviously Emma's character Enid is just finding out about the nightshades for the first time, right? So like she had a line like Yoko, Davina, and Kent. Kent is here, and but like. We joked about it because we were because obviously in episode eight and there was a lot of a build up before that and like when I'd see Emma, Emma would just be like bantering me off about being Kent or whatever. So when we did the scene, like she must have said about Kent about seven times. I think they edited it down. They go, Kent is here, Kent. Are you serious, Kent? Kent? What? Kent? 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 <laughs> she just kept going. She just kept going. I was like, okay, okay, relax, relax. Because we established that Kent was maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it. Do we have any more questions? Yeah. Hello, um, how is it to meet the fans today? The fans? Oh my god. Honestly guys, like, meeting all you guys, we were just chatting about, like, we had our lunch and stuff before, like, and I was talking to Naomi, and, like, John was there as well, and Morgan, but we're like, we're saying, like, genuinely how lovely it is to meet you guys like because we see all the stuff online like and but it's a screen ultimately you know yeah, there's like different. no emotional attachment to it like but like actually seeing you guys and like having conversations with you guys we're like wow there's some people that actually care about what we do you know <laughs> yeah it's it's really heartwarming and it's just been amazing meeting everybody and um have like just talking to you and 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 how much you enjoyed the show like it just means so much to us so thank you so much thank you i don't know how long we've got we've got much, much time left quick push it who hasn't had a question asked yet they wanted to ask yeah, questions well, let's get a couple more in quickly if you were to work on another franchise, which one would it be and who would you like to play? Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't care who I play. Oh, good answer. What character? Anyone? Oh, anyone. I mean, like, Will and Elizabeth have a son, I guess, which is now established, but I would have wanted to be uh, their kid. But, you know, anyone. I'll take... Tell me about your tradition. No, that's my, that's my private... Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I watch all the movies like every year because I just, as a kid, I was obsessed with them and I still am. But, um, you know, I'll play like uh, rock number four. Shout me out, guys. <laughs> that's a good answer. What about yourself? Ooh, that's a really hard one. I, I, I love Marvel and um, I'm obsessed with Deadpool. So I'd love to be in something like Deadpool. I think that would be so cool. Filming right now. Better get moving. <laughs> 